All right, it's time for our ultimate 49ers draft preview from the spot where Brock Purdy filmed his John Deere commercial and saved a woman from a coyote. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But through the entire top 30 list, that is the plan for this. And we'll bounce around different spots of the city. So typically the best way to get an idea of who the 49ers might draft is to keep a close eye on their top 30 visit list. And so far, we've accounted for 22 of these 30 visits. Three of them have been offensive linemen. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna go through this position by position today to get a really good gauge on who the 49ers have brought to the team facility. Those three offensive linemen are Kingsley Swamataya out of BYU, second round grade. Caden Wallace out of Penn State, he is a fourth round grade. And Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame, another second round grade. You might notice a, a commonality there. No first round graded offensive linemen amongst the top 30 that we know. They could have done some surreptitious visits in, the, in those final eight spots that we haven't accounted for of hiring guys like Tro, Troy Fotanu, who I've mocked to the 49ers and who I've talked about, but the 49ers aren't picking until number 31. And if their strategy is gonna be to sit back and make sure that they can keep as many picks as possible, maybe even trade down a little bit, makes sense they would look in the second to the fourth rounds. They've also looked at Roger Rosengarten out of Washington. Roger Rosengarten is a player who the 49ers decided to work out up in Seattle. All of these linemen are athletic. I think Rosengarten's the most athletic. Rosengarten might be the fastest lineman in, in the past several years as far as his 40 time goes. He's a really impressive player as far as movement ability goes. Kingsley Swamataya out of BYU, beefier than Roger Rosengarten. I think some polish might be needed at the NFL level, but the physical upside, he's so strong. Uh, is, is very, very enticing. Blake Fisher started two years at left tackle at Notre Dame. You know, the 49ers have drafted a Notre Dame tackle before in Mike McGlinchey. And if you want experience, Caden Wallace might be your guy out of Penn State, four years starting at Penn State at that right tackle position. I think anybody the 49ers draft, they're gonna want side versatility. So somebody like Roger Rosengarten to me is really exciting because he, played left tackle in high school, obviously trade with Joe Staley. And uh, it wasn't a top 30 visit, but they flew out to Seattle and they flew Chris Furster out there too. So I'm including him in this discussion, but he played left tackle under Ed McCaffrey in high school at, at CMC's high school. And then he moved the right tackle in Washington to protect the lefty quarterback, Michael Penix Jr.'s blind side. So he's got side versatility. They would think that Blake Fisher does played that left tackle spot for two years with Notre Dame, but Trent Williams is still on the football team. So you're not gonna see immediate action at left tackle. I think the 49ers would probably look for somebody to push Colton McKibbins and be a swing tackle. So that, that would uh, definitely require versatility. So you look at all the players they brought in, I think the potential positional adaptability, athleticism, uh, th those are all commonalities there. But the main thing to consider is that none of these guys are high first round grades. The 49ers are looking for developmental prospects, guys that can immediately be swing tackles and maybe even take over for Colton McKivitz at some point in 2024, but they just don't have the draft pick right now to be looking at the higher shelf guys. And at offensive tackle, that is a little bit of a hurdle that you have to get over. I mean, the, the surefire guys or the close to surefire guys are gonna be found higher up in the first round than where the 49ers have a pick. So that's why you have to use your higher floor that you extended by re-signing Colton McKivitz to probably pick somebody a little bit lower and then hope that he grows into the role. So it's a longer term plan at offensive line. Tight end, only one of them documented in the top 30 and it's Eric All. First he was at Michigan, then he transferred to Iowa. He's actually coming off of a torn ACL, so he didn't run a 40. And we know that fast 40 times are correlated with big time tight end production. 49ers were beneficiaries of this with George Kittle, ran a 4-5-40, but George Kittle's an alien. Can't expect anybody else in this position to run a 4-5-40, but Eric Gall looked fast on tape at both Michigan and Iowa, where he was on pace for a career year before he tore his ACL this past year. He has a fifth round tag on him right now. That's what people are expecting. That's where George Kittle went. Obviously the 49ers got value from George Kittle and Iowa tight end, like all, but he wasn't coming off of a torn ACL. So if the 49ers 
believe that Eric Gall can return to full speed. And the younger you have injuries like this, the better, because your body has a better chance to bounce back. They think he can come back to full speed. They might have somebody that can compliment George Kittle out there on the field, because I think Gall has good hands. I think that he's developing as a blocker, but he played at Iowa. He practiced last year at Iowa before he got hurt. That'll help you as a blocker. It's all about finding a number two to Kittle, the Robin to Batman, because the Fort Anders have struggled. They haven't been able to find that over the years. Charlie Warner only had 11 catches over four seasons with them. They tried to get Brock Wright, the RFA, but Detroit matched their offer. So now Eric Gall is the one player that they've worked out of the position. We'll see if he can overcome that torn ACL and if the 49ers might think about drafting him. To talk about some safeties, the 49ers have hosted three of them on their known top 30 list so far. This is a position of need. They're a body short right now. We've talked a lot about veterans and Justin Simmons, and he's still available, by the way, this offseason. But I think for the long-term replenishment effort, if you want to infuse this roster with youth, you got to look at some of these prospects. And Sione Vaki is one of my favorite prospects. He's one of those 30 visits out of Utah. Played running back as well. But instinctive player. Reminds some people of Talano Hufanga. Doesn't have the greatest metrics, 4 6 40, but... I think plays fast because of a good first step, and uh, he, he knows the game. He's a football player. The fact that he plays both ways, running back as well, tells you something. Then you've got Kalen Bullock out of USC. He's visited the 49ers. More prototypical speed, 75th percentile, 40, good 10-yard split, 6'2", nice size for the safety position. You have to like him. Javon Bullard, meanwhile, who's also visited the 49ers out of Georgia, he played the star position for, for Kirby Smart at Georgia. And that's a versatile DB position that Brandon Staley, new 49ers uh, defensive mastermind, has employed in the past. So Javon Bullard is a lightning bolt. Look out for him at 5'10 to be a versatile DB for the 49ers. I think that he, he absolutely can fit this new defensive vision, at least on the back end, that they might have with Brandon Staley. Because the star position, that, I mean, something that goes back all the way to the Bill Belichick Cleveland days. And... The idea was passed down from Belichick to Saban to Kirby Smart, and Javon Bullard played it at Georgia. He was the defensive player of the game in a national title game. This guy can play. He may not have the best metrics, not the biggest guy, but I think he could be a versatile DB that can move between nickel and safety. So Bullard, Kalen Bullock, and Sione Vaki, the three safeties the 49ers have hosted, all three of them you could see where the vision would be, where they would fit on this San Francisco roster. Don't be surprised that the 49ers use another valuable draft pick on a defensive lineman. They've hosted five of these guys on their top 30 visits. I'm gonna run you through the possibilities based on this intel. The only top 30 visit so far that's been documented that we know about that's involved a first round graded prospect has been on a defensive lineman. It's on Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan. This is a player that's expected to go later in the first round, maybe early in the second. It's going to be really interesting to see if the 49ers decide to pull the trigger on the defensive side of the football. No, a lot of people are saying, no, that this can't possibly be the time because they did invest so much in that defensive line over free agency. I tend to agree. I think that the 49ers will lean offense because they have drafted by need in the past, but I have to talk about Marshawn Nealon because he has visited the 49ers 6'3", about 270 pounds, has the size of the big end that the 49ers have coveted recently. But I would be cautious just because I don't think that the college production was that great for Marshawn Nealon, and he was at a smaller school at Western Michigan. Players with more upside, I think, especially relative to their draft position, you could find them on the 49ers visit list a little bit later on. Brandon Dorless, tackle out of Oregon. This is a guy who ran nearly 21 miles per hour on the GPS tracker. One of the fastest defensive tackle prospects that we've seen in quite some time. I think he could be an inside out guy for the 49ers as well. And that's really what they look for, right? Somebody who could slide inside, take advantage of guards on those passing downs. Then there's a nose tackle prospect. It's a, uh, it's a, I mean, really, really big player. I'm talking true size. Evan Anderson out of Florida Atlantic. Evan Anderson was 360 pounds when he entered college. He has since slimmed down about 320 pounds, but still a fire hydrant type. And this is somebody that's projected to be an undrafted free agent. So if the 49ers are looking for a big time run clogger in the middle of the formation, Evan Anderson may be a player that they take a look at. Mike Hall, now you're moving to 
smaller yet quicker defensive tackle talent. My call went to Ohio State. You should check out his tape against Michigan. I thought he was extremely quick off the ball against the Michigan Wolverines. I mean, this is a guy who, he's not gonna get beat with athleticism. He might get a little washed out because of size, but, but the way that the league is moving now, Aaron Donald is somebody who, I, I think made this a trend based on how well he performed just with how athletic he was, even though he was so much lighter than the standard defensive tackle. You, you really want that twitch up front. And I will say that Mike Call out of Ohio State has that, and the 49ers could do worse than adding another player, another defensive lineman from Ohio State. Obviously, the one that's on their team right now has performed really well. We talk about quickness and athleticism and strength and just potential. The 49ers might get real value if they are able to draft a player that they brought in that has insane numbers, and that's Chris Braswell out of Alabama. Braswell's hit 21.9 miles per hour on the GPS, and he has squatted 705 pounds. Also had over 10 sacks last year, so production in the SEC. They're putting second or third round on Chris Braswell. Defensive end, about 251 pounds. Remember the 49ers drafted Robert Beal Jr. last year for his ability to get off the ball and move? Well, Chris Braswell, again, at 22 miles an hour and 705 pounds on the squat rack. I think Chris Kosarek would be really, really excited with that potential right there. Look out for that because the 49ers, I mean, five of these 30 visits at least have got a defensive lineman. I think they're definitely going to try to give Chris Kosarek some more material to work with. Trevin Wallace and Tatum Bethune are the two linebackers that we know of on the 49ers 30 visit list. Trevin Wallace, he's projected to go in the third round. This would be a bigger swing for the 49ers at a position where they did draft two linebackers last year. They did draft D. Winters out of TCU and Jalen Graham out of Purdue. And Trevin Wallace is really fast. I know that the 49ers love that, 4 5 40, but there's been talk of some over aggressiveness. It, it doesn't seem like he's quite played into his athleticism yet. So this would be a project, a developmental linebacker, and I'm not really sure if the 49ers would be willing to use a third round pick, something a little bit more valuable on that, especially since they have stocked that room recently. That being said, the Dre Greenlaw injury does make you think about a bigger investment at the position. Other linebacker on the top 30 list is Tatum Bethune out of Florida State. This is a guy who's slower, but I think that somebody who hits hard and somebody who might be a more natural player at the position. So not the same athleticism metrics as Trevin Wallace, but somebody who might be able to immediately contribute on special teams just because of his ability to play the game. Those are just the two linebackers that the 49ers have looked at in documented fashion. There still might be other players on their list. And linebacker is a position where the 49ers could add. In fact, anything is a position where the 49ers could add. So this is the famous spot in San Francisco where Brock Purdy saved a Bay Area news anchor from a coyote while filming his John Deere commercial with Colton McKivitz. You'll recognize that bluish gray house that was at the start of the commercial. And then you'll recognize the view that Brock Purdy and Colton McKivitz were driving toward at the end of the commercial. So I promised you guys I'd hit the spot. It's Bernal Heights here in San Francisco. And while we're talking about Brock Purdy, this continues my series of a look at the top 30 visits for the 49ers. And we're gonna look at the three cornerbacks who we know have visited. So these rookies, the first one that I really wanna talk about is Decamarian Richardson out of Mississippi State. He's one of the most physically impressive cornerbacks in this entire draft. 6'2", so he's got the size, but also, uh, I mean, the, the guy runs a 4'340". I mean, this is top-end speed kind of player. The problem is that he hasn't delivered all too much production at the cornerback position yet. No interceptions in college, but if you just want pure physical traits, especially if you're looking at a taller cornerback, if you're the 49ers, Decamarian Richardson out of Mississippi State is somebody to look at. Another player with really plus physical traits is Andrew Phillips out of Kentucky. He's a little bit shorter than Richardson, but the vertical jump and the broad jump, like a 42, 43 inch vertical, really good broad jump as well. 97th percentile out of cornerbacks on both of those. Andrew Phillips, another player with no college interceptions, but 
a lot of explosion and physical tools the 49ers might be able to use at that cornerback position. And finally, Chell Smith Wade out of Washington State. Now, this is a guy who's not as physically impressive. He's a little bit shorter than both Richardson and Andrew Phillips, about 5'11", but he has produced in college. 20 pass breakups for Chow Smith Wade, three interceptions in college, so a little bit more of a polished contributor to cornerback, even though uh, he obviously doesn't have the, the, the same physical prowess just by the tail of the tape. So, But the tail of the game tape has been good for Chow Smith Wade. All three of these corners have visited the 49ers in the top 30 process, and yes, drafting a cornerback I think is close to necessary this offseason. You've got to continue adding at that position. Your top four veteran corners are only under contract for this 2024 season. That's Charvarius Ward, Diamond Lenore, Rocky Yassin, and Isaac Yidam. All those guys only under contract through this 2024 season. So all the guys I listed, they're going to face off against Brock Birdie in, in training camp. And then the three prospects that I listed, we've got another cornerback to add to the 49ers top 30 list. It is Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. This is one of the fastest players in this NFL draft. 4 2 8 40, 1 5 0, 10 yard split. I mean, the guy is explosive as hell. His 20 yard split time was the fastest of all players in this NFL draft. 1 7 6. That is impressive. Now, the thing about Nate Wiggins, even though he's projected to be a first or second round pick, is that he's a little slight of frame. It's in the 170s. I'd be a little skinny. Obviously, the 49ers have had strength issues with somebody like Ambry Thomas. They've tried to bulk him up over the years. That's something they would have to do with Nate Wiggins as well. You're going to have to, I mean, in the NFL, especially at that catch point, there needs to be more muscle. So I, I think, although that is obviously a concern, the speed with somebody like Nate Wiggins is very, very tantalizing. I mean, 4 2 8 4, anything under sub, sub 4 3. Uh, that is rare. So not a surprise that the 49ers have been interested in this cornerback out of Clemson. This is one of the highest graded players that they have hosted on a top 30 visit. The other one being Marshawn Nealand, the edge rusher out of Western Michigan. So there's a need for speed on the back end, and the 49ers are definitely interested in it. If they stay at number 31, if there's no trade back or maybe even a trade up, because we're talking about that whole Brandon Ayuk situation. More on that in a little bit, by the way. But if they stay at number 31, you know, addressing right tackle or addressing cornerback, because John Lynch said it really clearly yesterday, corner, there's a need there. It might not be immediate. You've got Lenore, you've got Yidam, you've got Rocky Asin on top of Charvarius Ward. But all the guys that just listed, they're only under contract through 2024. So I think that you absolutely need to think about the season after this 2024 year. And, and that's why I've long said they might draft a cornerback surprisingly high. And I don't think it's a shock that they're looking at Nate Wiggins, the speedster, 428 speed out of Clemson. Here's my top sleeper prospect for the 49ers in this 2024 draft. It is Jamal Hill out of Oregon. Listen to this. He began his college career and played most of it at Nickelback. He finished his college career at inside linebacker. We know that the 49ers have loved taking guys with DB backgrounds for their linebacker positions. That's why they've been so damn good in coverage from Fred Warner, who played a really a, a glorified nickelback role in college, to somebody like Demetrius Flanagan Foles, who was actually a safety in college, to Dre Greenlaw, who was the fastest player on Arkansas's defense, even though he was a linebacker. They love linebackers who can run. Jamal Hill can obviously run. He used to be a nickelback. He's an inside linebacker. I mean, you don't see this kind of positional conversion. I think adaptability has been really big for the 49ers on all fronts. Even Kalia Davis, who was a stack inside linebacker, who's now a defensive tackle. So the 49ers, that's how they try to glean comparative advantages. I think on both offense and defense, we talk so much about their positional adaptability on offense well it's a big thing on defense as well so Jamal Hill he he might not be drafted this might be an undrafted free agent prospect but the 49ers have had multiple points of contact with him and according to one report they even initially had a top 30 visit scheduled with him although I'm not sure if that top 30 visit did actually happen either way we know they're interested 
in Jamal Hill, and we know that he fits their profile, and there could be tremendous value here in either the seventh round or an undrafted free agency. So my sleeper of the draft for the 49ers is Jamal Hill, the former nickelback, or the four, that turned into an inside linebacker for Oregon. I think that matches what the 49ers are looking for very, very closely. So keep an eye on that as this draft approaches just one more day until we get going.